good evening one and all today i am going to talk about role of amniotic membrane in ophthalmic surgery uh, coming to history amniotic membrane was first used therapeutically by davis for a skin tr transplantation in 1910 deroth is the first person he used the fetal membranes in ophthalmic surgery to reconstruct the ocular surface in patients with symblephron coming to structure of fetal membranes fetal membrane consists of two layers outer chorion and inner amnion which is avascular and amniotic membrane is 0.02 to 0.05 mm thick and it is classically considered uh, uh, to be composed of three layers one is epithelium basement membrane and stroma epithelium it contains metabolically active cuboidal cells with microvilli at apical surface basement membrane contains type 4 type 5 and type 7 collagen in addition to fibronectin and lamin stroma is further divided into three layers inner compact layer middle fibroblast layer and outer spongy layer this is a line diagram as well as is a histological picture showing epithelium basement membrane compact layer uh, fibroblastic layer and spongy layer coming to properties mechanical properties like amniotic membrane it acts as biological bandage and it shields the regenerating epithelium for example it's used in trachoma steven johnson syndrome ocular cicatricial pemphigoid next promotion of epithelialization uh, the basement membrane of amniotic membrane closely resembles that of conjunctiva and cornea especially with regard to collagen composition four main effects uh, which facilitate the regenerating corneal epithelium are facilitation of epithelial cell migration reinforcement of basal epithelial cell adhesion promotion of cell differentiation and prevention of apoptosis next coming to anti fibrotic and anti inflammatory properties fetal hyaluronic acid it will suppress the transforming growth factor beta signaling this will uh, reduce transforming growth factor beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 isoforms which in turn inhibits corneal limbal and congenital fibroblasts next anti inflammatory effect of amniotic membrane is due to production of pro inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 1a interleukin 2 8 interferon gamma tumor necrosis factor beta anti angiogenic properties is due to production of thrombospondin 1 endostatin and uh, tissue inhibitors of metalloproteases 1 2 3 and 4 lack of immunogenicity is due to uh, it lacks the expression of hla a b d r because of that there will be no immunological reaction next antimicrobial properties antibacterial uh, effects are uh, against both gram positive and gram negative organisms like streptococcus staphylococcus and e coli and pseudomonas aeruginosa and these antibacterial effects due to are due to ba uh, bactericidin beta lysine lysozyme transferrin and 7s immunoglobulin <clears throat> procuring uh, processing and preserving amniotic membrane amniotic membrane is retrieved under strict aseptic conditions by lscs and they are serologically tested for hiv hepatitis b c Uh, then antibiotics covering both gram positive gram negative bacteria and fungi are uh, used to wash the placenta under sterile conditions it contains 50 microgram per ml of penicillin and streptomycin 100 microgram per ml of neomycin 2.5 microgram per ml of amphotericin then blunt dissection is used to separate then amniotic membrane it is preserved by means of two techniques one is cryo preservation one is dry deepthylized form uh, to prepare a cryo preserved one kimetol and lietol they recommended using 50 percentage glycerol in dual becos modified eagle medium in a ratio of 1 is to 1 and this membrane is cut into multiple pieces and placed on nitrocellulose uh, paper strips with epithelial side up then it is cryo preserved at minus 80 degrees centigrade and this cryo preserved one is stored in glycerol it can be used effectively for over a period of 1 year this is a technique uh, where amniotic membrane is uh, placed on the nitrocellulose filter paper with epithelial side up next dry one it does not require to be attached to nitrocellulose filter paper and it is free once and it can be stored at a room temperature of 2 to 5 uh, room temperature and for up to 2 to 5 years and it is rehydrated prior to use and this is sterilized by using low energy electron beam radiation preserving it is it using under a low heat and air vacuum then coming to surgical principles and methods of implantation there are three techniques one is graft or inlay patch or overlay or combined technique graft or inlay amniotic membrane uh, it is placed epithelial side up and it is trimmed to fit the size of the underlying epithelial defect uh, depending on the de uh, underlying defect it can be used as single layer or a multi layer graft this multi layer graft also known as layered or fill in technique this is the, this green one is the epithelial defect and this orange one is the amniotic membrane which is sutured to cornea tends to nylon next is patch or overlay technique here the amniotic membrane is sutured to the ocular surface with uh, and it is layer uh, which is layered at the underlying defect so that the host epithelium is present below the membrane next is combined one then this two or more layers of amniotic membrane are used inner small layer or layers they act as a graft and outer large layer act as a patch coming to ophthalmic indications conjunctival surface reconstruction and like in pterygium surgery chemical burn cicatricial conjunctivitis oss and leaking blebs simblephron release phonics formation whereas in corneal surface reconstruction like 
pigment epithelial detachment, non-healing stromal ulcers, partial and total serious bullous keratopathy, etc. Here is a small video showing a bi-headed uh, pterygium. After excision of a pterygium, uh, the conjunctival autograft is uh, placed. Then amniotic membrane graft is placed here with epithelial side up. Then finally, it is sutured up. Thank you.